The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, praise the Lord and welcome again to I Am Alive. My name is Philip Trent. I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're located about seven miles east of Horse Cave on a highway called Highway 218, our Lee Grand uh, Highway. We're right out past the Lee Grand Elementary School uh, there. Our schedule of services Sunday morning, Sunday school is at 930. Our worship service at 10.30 and midweek services on Wednesday nights at 6.30 in the basement of level of our facility. We're enjoying uh, a wonderful time of the presence of God. I guarantee we are uh, it's coming through uh, 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 Easter service or sunrise service or sun, uh, resurrection Sunday uh, as this program is going on here on Sunday night. Uh, Kentucky Just Us is playing bluegrass gospel music there at the church and I know we're having a high heel time so to speak and uh, we just we just do feel we have a Absolutely. good time in the presence of the Lord. We've uh, had baptisms here, like water baptisms uh, lately of people that's received Christ and desire to follow him in water baptism, which is right to do. And uh, so we're just grateful for that. And we thank you for watching our programs here on I Am Alive. And good to have you with us again, Phil. And we're just Glad thankful for here. the goodness of God and the grace of God. Father, we're just so thankful that we have thank these you, opportunities to be here on uh, Christian TV and to oh, these amazing. DVDs and uh, uh, various ways that this message gets around the country uh, through uh, videos and all kinds of things that's going on with our uh, uh, medium or whatever that thing's called. Uh, people do that for me, so I don't even know social media, I guess. We thank you for the outreach of that to people around the world that we'll never meet here on this planet. But we're introducing them to you, Lord Jesus, and we're thankful, Father, for that opportunity to do that. We pray, Father, for uh, these that listen and these that watch, if someone's hurting in their body, physically ill, uh, difficulties, tragedies come. We pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit to be upon them, Father, and your yes. word to uh, minister the word of truth that brings divine healing and divine impartation to them. We thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, provision for our uh, different ministries that you've raised up and uh, we're doing so well and we thank you for the people that have given in the past that support our ministries and even these telecasts have been uh, provided by the generosity of a family and we thank you for them and Jesus. invoke your richest blessings upon them. Uh, the people that watch us consistently, we thank you for them and the occasional watcher that just turned this program on and we thank you for especially for them tonight. Father, we pray that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done in all of our lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible with you tonight, you want to join us. We start our program, typically we had in the last couple of weeks, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1. God gave me this scripture over 20 years ago, Phil, when yeah. I entered into uh, radio ministry uh, to uh, use this scripture as the foundational scripture for the I Am Alive broadcast. Paul writing to the church at Rome said, as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you at Rome or wherever you're from, we're ready we, by the grace of God to present the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed, I'm not ashamed, for we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for we know it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, regardless of who this everyone is. It's through the gospel. What is the gospel? That God so loved the world that gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, mm -hmm. trusteth in Him, abides in Him, sticks to Him like glue, would not perish but have 
eternal, everlasting life. That's the gospel. Yes. God loves you tonight, friend. I guarantee you. There's nothing you could do or have done, and I don't, I don't want you to go do something stupid now, but, <laughs> uh, but God loves you irregardless of what uh, you've done in your past. Right. Let's uh, not plan on continuing that. Let's ask God to help us to do better in our future and to uh, to change our lives for His glory and for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, uh, all about the gospel of Jesus. For in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You remember Phil said, uh, Phil said, Jesus said, y'all so much alike. I <laughs> Thank quote you. you Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus said that except your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. you shall in no way see the kingdom of God. Right. Interesting. Now the Pharisees were stickler for the word. Uh, they, they, they did all kind of things. I mean, they went to hardships and all kind of things and disciplines in their way of doing things, but yet they were not disciples of Jesus Christ. Right. When Jesus came, they missed him. The very one that the Bible talked about, volumes of books. Matter of fact, it said if everything was written that could be written about Jesus, the world itself couldn't contain the volume of the books. Right. But they missed his appearing. Jesus came and walked among them, and their eyes was not able to see him. Yeah. Except God give us eyes to see and ears to hear, one time Jesus was preaching and they asked him, why do you do this in these parables? And he says, so them that ain't got eyes to see, can't see it. Right. And they ain't got ears. But I've given you ears and I've given you eyes. And he'll give you some too right. if you'll ask him for it, yep. if you'll seek him. You can become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants you to follow him and to live big for him. And so we ask you that question tonight. Are you a disciple of Christ? Well, let's look into the Word of God and just find out what a disciple is. Phil, do you want to take it over from there? I yes, probably I, no. dropped you off at a bad you, spot. No, you're, you're good. Have you ever uh, heard someone say, maybe you have said, uh, I just don't like them. Or, oh, I can't stand them. And talking about another person. You ever heard someone say, uh, well, I, I just don't know what it is, but I, I just don't like to be around them. <laughs> Sometimes we have uh, issues with people and love becomes difficult. Not every person is easy to love. Mm -hmm. But this is what we have to do as Christians. We have to make a choice to love. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to love a person by faith. You just have to believe in God and say, God, I trust you, so I'm going to love them. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about love, love becomes a choice. It's a choice we have to make as a believer. In John chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, He that saith he's in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. Mm -hmm. When you say that you are in light and hateth, that word hateth means that you have no love for, you detest, or watch this, you persecute. If you say that you are in the light, a Christian, Christ-like, but you persecute another person, mm -hmm. it says that you are in darkness. It says that that person is a fellow man, a fellow brother. It says, he that loves his brother abides in the light. This is verse 10, chapter 2, verse 10. And there is no occasion of stumbling in him. There's no reason that you've stumbled if you love your brother because you're abiding in the light or the love of God. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 11, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness. So we have to make a choice to love. It says that if you walk in darkness and know not whether he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Mm -hmm. If I don't walk in love, there's a darkness that comes over my life. So I can't afford not to love you. Amen. That doesn't mean, and we've got this thing nowadays that says that if, if you disagree with me, you don't love me. <laughs> and people just get mad if you disagree, especially in the political realm. Listen, I understand that there's a lot of things that get people really riled up. <laughs> but I can or you can disagree with me or I can disagree with you and us still love one another. And, and you take it back to something that's simple. Okay, I do not like coconut. I just don't. 
I, it's not the flavor of it, it's the texture of it, okay? My wife loves coconut. And so for the anniversary, sometimes I'll get her those uh, Mounds bars that's got coconut in them. She loves those things. I do not like them you, at all. You take we, the chocolate off of them first? No, I don't. I leave the chocolate on. But we disagree <laughs> about coconut. And it's a running joke with us. I don't like it. She does. Well, yeah, but that's something simple. That's not anything. Listen, it's the same exact pattern. Just because you disagree doesn't mean you can't walk in love. That's right. And a person can walk in love if they choose to. If they choose to. Because God is love. Mm -hmm. And God and His Word, they are one. One reason that people lose their way in life is they do not walk in love. Mm -hmm. If you don't walk in love, you're not going to be able to hear the voice of God. Because God is love. And if you're not walking in love and living in love and doing what God says concerning love, it says you are in darkness. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens when you're in darkness? You lose your way. We don't have a light. It says He is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We should not be living in darkness. Mm -hmm. But it says that we are in darkness if we don't love. So a reason that people get so confused and get so lost in life is they let their love walk get sidetracked. And you know, a little thing can happen and the story as it's told gets bigger. And the next thing you know, you've got family feuds. Mm -hmm. I remember watching uh, one of the Andy and Barney, Andy Griffith shows, and there was the family feud between two different ones and their kids decide to get married. Mm -hmm. and, and when Andy gets to the bottom of it, nobody could figure out why they were feuding. <laughs> and he said, well, why are you feuding? Why, why are you shooting at them? Because they're the Hatfields. Well, why are you shooting at them? Because they're the McCoys. And, and next thing you know, you don't even know why that you're mad, but you're mad. Mm -hmm. And it all started with something little. And so many times we let the small things, the Bible talks about the, the little foxes spoil the vine. Right. And it's those little bitty things that we let fester and grow. And the next thing you know, we have become bitter and our talking is not right. And we're saying things that we shouldn't say. And, and, and we have this attitude about us that's not love. Mm -hmm. Look what James said. Now, who was James? I always like to point out that James was the half-brother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? James' dad was Joseph. Jesus' dad was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But James and Jesus were brothers. James got to grow up with Jesus. So, he, you know, he knew a lot about Jesus' life, although James did not become a follower of Christ till late. He, he was not a follower of Christ till after the death. So, we see that James in chapter 3 verse 14 says, If you have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Don't lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't lie against the Word. Why? Because it says, This wisdom descendeth not from above. This isn't heavenly. This is earthly. It came from earth. Now, now, who is the God of this world? The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. So when it says it's earthly, it's, it's from his realm and his mm -hmm. kingdom. Then it says it's sensual. Well, what does that mean? That means it's sense ruled. I'm mad at you because of the way I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm being ruled by my senses and not by the Word. It says it's earthly, it's sensual, it's about me, and it's devilish. Well, what is earthly, sensual, and devilish? If you have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts. So we've got to be sure we walk in love and keep those things out of our hearts, keep those things out of our mouth. How can I tell if I'm walking in love? The, Jesus said that you'll know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And if I'm walking in love toward you, I don't, I go back to that scripture we read previously, I'm not persecuting you, I'm not talking bad about you, I, I am, I'm not angry with you. You can disagree and still walk in love. And people struggle with that. You got something you, to say you there? You know, there's people, and this just comes to my mind, there's people that uh, knowing that you've been through a difficult time with somebody, it's not simple sometimes to get over things. Right. And you, you battle through it, and you've used the Scripture, and you fought the battle, and then they come along at a, at a very inopportune time, and they bring that subject up. And they, and they prod you about it. They get you in a crowd. Yep. They get you in a bunch of people, yep. and they say, well, what about so-and-so? How are you all doing with that? 
and they, you know, and see, that's, that's the devil. That's yeah, the absolutely. devil that's doing that because he's a, he's a master that wants you to reason. You know, the Bible talks about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. And, and many times, you know, there's things that I dealt with years ago uh, that I'm, I'm praying and I'm interceding and I'm doing right. and the devil will try to project something like that in my mind right in the middle of a holy time, right? You know, sure. And because he's a devil, and you right. have to cast those things down, and and sometimes verbally say, "I forgave that person of that. Get out of here," right? And move on. And but when if you're if you've been around somebody and they've had a hard time, don't bring stuff like that up. No. Good lands. Don't. If you love a person, you wouldn't bring that mess back right. up. Right. Jesus doesn't do that. No. God said He takes your sin and takes it as far as the Absolutely. east is from the west. He doesn't bring it back Forgets up. Forgets it. Notice this verse 16 of chapter 3. It says, For where there is envying and strife, there is confusion and every evil That's work. That's exactly what we're talking you about. You don't need to be envious right. and you don't need to, to have strife. Bring that stuff up. I understand. I mean, th there's times with that I'm hanging with certain people that, mm -hmm. that basically I have to in a sense that, that, that they're in the same place I am. That we're in disagreement over things in the scripture, mm -hmm. but we can't get along right. because I choose to walk in love. Uh, in one particular instance, person has, has very much made it clear that that they don't agree with me and don't like the way I think, and I still shake their hand and tell them I love them. Yeah, and and I don't do it to be mean. Mm -hmm. I just want them to know, no hard feelings on this end, mm -hmm. because I need to walk in love. You cannot afford not to walk in love because he that hateth his brother is in darkness. Right. Well, if you're in darkness, you don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5, 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. The, the uh, Message Bible says the very religious or the non-religious, that don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But faith which works by I love. love. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have your faith working because without faith, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So my faith is affected by my love wall. Mm -hmm. Now I want to give you a great example in the time I have left that Jesus didn't let what people did affect him. Now we know this, but there's one particular instance I wanted to bring out. There's a term that young people use today called being ghosted. Now a lot of people may not know what that means, but to be ghosted means that you've texted someone and they don't text you back. Or you've called someone and they don't call you back. They used to always text you back. They used to always call you back. But now all of a sudden they've ghosted you. <laughs> or you've met someone and you start talking to them. You know, maybe you got a little relationship thing going on. Maybe you're going to date them maybe in your mind. And all of a sudden they ghost you. They disappear. Right? You can't see them. You know they're out there, but they've ghosted you. <laughs> So this is a term that young people use. Oh, well, they ghosted me, all right? And, and sometimes I'll, I'll use it right back to them. I say, I text you three times. You ghosted me this week. You know, and we, we kind of use that term. So I don't know if you've ever had anybody that ghosted you. Yep. Or if you've ever had a friend that when you needed them, they seemed to disappear. Or uh, you, you had a trouble that loving somebody that just seemed to drop you. You know, and you're like, well, what did I do? Mm -hmm. You got ghosted. In John chapter 15 and verse 13, it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Now this is Jesus. He's going to lay down his lives for his friends. He says, You are my friends. Mm -hmm. Now you, you've got to take that and look at that and say, How can you misunderstand that? He says to the disciples, You are my friends if you do what I've commanded you Eels. to do. You're my friends. And then he says, henceforth I call you not servants. Mm -hmm. He said, for the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends for the things that I've heard of my Father I've made known unto you. Mm -hmm. Jesus shared his own personal life with the Father with those disciples. He shared his personal thoughts, his personal times. He shared personal information. He said, what I've heard from my Father. Mm -hmm. Remember one time he said, everything I speak, I've heard from the Father. Mm -hmm. He said, I took what God showed me 
and I showed you. Oh, I gave it, it to you. How close are you when you share those things, when you share your God experiences? That's close. So Jesus called His disciples friends, and then He made a warning to them in Mark that things were going to get difficult. Look at Mark 14 in the 27th verse. And Jesus said, all of you shall be offended because of me this night. Now he's, just, he's talking to his disciples and he's talking to the ones he's called friends. He's talking to the ones he spent three years with. He's talking to the ones that he walked on water in front of. He's talking to the ones that the boat got filled with fish because of him. He's talking with the people that have seen him do miracle after miracle after miracle mm -hmm. from feeding the 5,000 to, to healing the uh, people to even raising the dead. Mm -hmm. And he said, this day you're going to be offended in me. And just says it just as nonchalantly. And then he says, for it is written. He said, there's scripture to back this up. He said, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. He's telling them the story that today you're going to be offended and after I'm risen, I'm going to find you in Galilee. Mm -hmm. Wow. Today we look back at that and say, how could you misunderstand that? But mm -hmm. they did. Right the but head. Peter said, Although shall all shall be offended, I won't. Yeah, not me. Not me. <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you this day, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said this, and Peter got vehement about it. Mm -hmm. I will die with you. Well, okay, sure, I hear you. And he says, I won't deny you. But they came to Gethsemane, and this same one that said, I'll die for you, and I'll never turn my back on you, falls asleep while Jesus asked him to pray. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even control himself enough to stay awake. Mm -hmm. Look at what, what happened. Jesus came, and they, they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he took some of the disciples, and he said, you stay here. And then he took three, and he told them, Peter, James, and John, he said, you stay here. And then he went on a little farther and he prayed. So he's got one group here and one group here, and then he's got himself. And he goes a little farther and he prays and he comes back after an hour mm -hmm. and they're asleep. And he said, what, Could, couldn't you watch with me for one hour? Mm -hmm. And understand this is where Jesus is, is going through the, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Jesus is literally crucifixion. crucifying himself. Mm -hmm. He's making the decision. Mm -hmm. But he goes back a second time. And he prays. And he comes back. And what's happened? They're asleep. Sleep again. Verse 37, he come find them sleeping and says, Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Could you not watch with me one hour? He said, pray lest you enter into temptation. Mm -hmm. He's already warned them that on this day you're going to be offended in me. He's already told them that, that this is going to be a tough day. And Peter's standing up, I will never, and he goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 40, he comes back and he returned and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And what did Jesus say? He came a third time then. And when he came back, he said, my hour is come. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Mm -hmm. Three different times so we understand that Jesus prayed for approximately three hours and they were sleeping. The one that said, I will never deny you and the ones that he warned. And, and it even said that they all said to him, we'll not deny you. But they couldn't even hang with him while he prayed. That's why we need to walk and pray and watch and pray. <laughs> Absolutely. And lay sitting down and, and pray. <laughs> and understand that Jesus, uh. even though this happened, it didn't seem like he was mad. No. It's just but he, he did say, couldn't you do that? Mm -hmm. Verse 42 says, rise up, let us go. He that betrayeth me is at hand. Well, who is the one that betrayed him? Judas. He was in that first outer group. Mm -hmm. Don't be in the outer group. Right. Get in the inner group. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in Mark chapter 14 and verse 50, talking about the disciples, after Jesus is betrayed, it said, and they all forsook him and fled. What did they just do? They ghosted Jesus. Mm -hmm. They ghosted him. 
They'd been with him all this time. He had always been there to answer their questions. They'd always been there to help him. And now in his time of need, they ghosted him. They are gone. And Peter, verse 54, followed afar off, even into the palace of the high priest, and sat with the servants, the servants and warmed himself. And three times he denied Jesus. It said one time he even cursed. Mm -hmm. He was vehemently going to die for Jesus. Now he's vehemently denying Jesus. Mm -hmm. He has ghosted Jesus. Why does this mean a lot to you today? Because some of us in our life have been through times where we've ghosted Jesus. We acted like we didn't even know Him. We acted like that He didn't even exist in our lives. We go through periods of time that we're on fire for God, and then we go through periods of time that we're not on fire for God. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you how Jesus responded to these people. These were His very disciples, people that had been with Him. It says in the 20th chapter and the 18th verse that Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen Jesus and He had spoke things to her. Then that same day and that evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they were assembled in hiding. Why? Because, well, they killed Jesus. He's our leader. They might kill us. So they're literally hiding from the Jews. And Jesus come and stood in the midst of them. And the first thing He says is, Peace be unto you. And after He told them to have peace because of their fear, Jesus came and He said unto them again in the 21st verse, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when He had said this, He breathed on them. They had ghosted Him by leaving Him, and He ghosted them by enabling them. Amen. He said, As the Father has given to me, He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you and when I have ghosted Jesus, when we have lived in time periods of our life that we were on fire for God, but now it's been three weeks since you've been to church because mm. Easter was three weeks ago, <laughs> right? Now all of a sudden it's been a while since I've read my Bible and you're mm. like, well, Jesus is mad at me. Even His own disciples that ghosted Him, whenever He saw them, He said to them, I want to enable you. Enable you to what? To be a witness for me. Jesus isn't mad at you, friend. He wants to ghost you in a different way than you ghosted Him. You ghosted Him by leaving Him. He wants to ghost you by enabling you to be part of His kingdom and to do what He's called you to do. It's called grace. It's God's ability to do what you can't do on your own. Amen. And even when you think that God could be mad at you, He's not. He's God you. loves you. He is unconditional in His love. Amen. Because if these guys who Jesus had invested so much in would ghost Jesus and Jesus turn around and the very first thing He did, He didn't fuss at them. He wasn't mad at them. He didn't even correct them. The first thing He did, He said, Peace be unto you. Amen. And then He gave them His precious Holy Spirit. Amen. That's where He wants to put you today. He wants you to give he wants to give you the grace and the ability to do what He's called you to do. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll be here next week. Peace.